Okay, we should be all set. Um, I know I've asked this like three times, but the screen is still sharing, right? Okay, okay. So let's begin. So today we are going to talk about metacognition and um, sort of learning how we learn. So firstly, oh, I should click on this. Okay, what is metacognition? People don't know what it is uh, commonly. So I wanted to start off by asking, what do you guys think it means? Because I know that I didn't know what it meant for the longest time. So if anybody thinks they know what it is or would like to offer a definition, feel free because uh, I wanna see what you guys think. I know as a student, when I was um, a freshman, I I had heard metacognition. Oh, a little background about me, I should say. I'm a psych major, so metacognition is something that I was taught about very early on, but in the beginning, I didn't know what it meant. I thought it was like um, something, I mean, it is cognitive, but I was thinking more along the lines of like a specific psychological process that happens like to clients in therapy or something like that, or like a therapeutic technique or something much more specific than it actually is. And so when I learned about it, I thought this is great, you know, because it's not specific enough to where it's uh, exclusive. It can be used in so many different ways. So metacognition itself is, we have a couple definitions. One, the first one, I pulled directly from the dictionary. So metacognition is defined as awareness and understanding of one's own thought processes. Or you can think about it more casually as thinking about how you think. So throughout the presentation, we're gonna go through a bunch of different examples of what exactly this means. Um, so that it's not just a definition that you think about, but actually something that you can apply in real life that makes sense. So. Can I hop the, in really quick? Yeah. Um, one thing I also, because I'm a little nerdy about words, um, I loved the idea that like metacognition, if you really think about it, it makes sense, right? Like we think about things as being meta and for the most part, cognition is like brain stuff. And so when you put it together, it's like, oh yeah, I get it now. But when you hear it, like Chris said for the first time, it's like, that sounds super complex and over my head. And it's not. So yeah, anyway, go ahead, Chris. No, that's a good point to have made. Um, for this presentation, we are going to work with one example, a college student, because that just, you know, obviously makes sense to work with since we are primarily college students here or somehow involved with college. So that is going to be our person. So picture a hypothetical college student and that's how we're gonna walk through this. Here's a brief outline, just so you know, like where we're at, um, how far along we are. We're gonna start out with metacognition and studying and with each topic, or I should say at least the first four topics, I will put a reflection question. You don't have to answer out loud if you don't want to, but I will provide my own answer to it just as like an example. Um, so we're gonna start out with metacognition and studying, move to work life, social life, and then individual metacognition because these are four aspects that I thought were pretty relevant to the lives of college students. Um, you know, most of us have jobs. We are all studying. We are all social people, even if we might consider ourselves introverts. You know, we still have a social aspect of life. And then individually, we can all think metacognitively. So then I'm going to talk about why we should think this way after we go through the examples. And then we'll sort of end with resources for further development. If you want to go through this, these resources, we definitely can. Um, but if not, I will at least show you them so that you can go through them on your own. So um, any questions, I should say, before we get started? If not, I will hop right into it. So I don't know how many have heard of Bloom's taxonomy, but this is 
a pyramid of sort of metacognitively thinking, thinking about how you think, how you study. So looking at these things, at the bottom of the pyramid, we have remembering, which is retrieving, recognizing, and recalling relevant knowledge from long-term memory. So everybody knows what it's like to remember something. But as we move up the pyramid, we're sort of getting to a more sophisticated level of information, retention, understanding, comprehension, stuff like that. So remembering at the bottom level of the pyramid would be the most basic level of understanding. If you can remember something, great. But what good does that do? Moving up, we have understanding, which is constructing, you know, meaning from oral, written, graphic messages through interpreting, exemplifying, classifying, summarizing, inferring, comparing, explaining, etc. So it's not enough to just remember something. It might be enough for a test, but if you want to learn something, do you actually understand it? And so we'll go through different ways of thinking about that further into the presentation. But for the sake of this pyramid, as we move up, we then have applying. So carrying out or using a procedure through executing or implementing. So when you learn something, you think, okay, I remember it. I remember the words that were spoken to me. I understand it because I can rephrase them in my own uh, words. I can apply it to my own life or a hypothetical problem. You can sort of get the picture as we're going up that the level of understanding becomes more sophisticated. So analyzing, breaking material into constituent parts, determining how the parts relate to one another and to an overall structure. So take this pyramid, for example. Do you understand the pyramid? You can remember the steps of the pyramid easily, but do you understand them? Do you know what they mean? You know, if you were to look at this picture without the captions, would you be able to provide the captions yourself? Applying, can you take this pyramid and apply it to your own life, evaluate your own thought processes, analyzing. That's what we're doing now. We're breaking it down into individual constituent parts and looking at them as they stand alone. Moving on to evaluating, making judgments based on criteria and standards through checking and critiquing. So let's say, for example, I mean, this pyramid is pretty structured, no pun intended, but it is a pretty simple thing to look at, pretty simple image. But if you're looking at complex material and it's not as nicely put together as this image, when you analyze something, you break it into parts. I think of a math problem, you know, there are certain parts of math problems that you have to figure out. You think of variables, all this stuff, evaluating. When you make judgments based on information, you think about the laws of nature, for example. What does and does not fit a certain theory? You know, actually doing stuff with the information in your mind, connecting it to other things. I mean, evaluating it. And then at the top of the pyramid, we have creating. So putting all these elements back together to form a coherent or functional whole, reorganizing elements into a new pattern or structure through generating, planning, or producing. So I think of note taking when I think of this, if I were to be taking notes on this pyramid, I would remember the pyramid. You know, I could remember all the words, the one, two, three, four, the six steps. I could remember those. Understanding, since I've talked about it, I can probably understand what each of these mean. Applying, I'm applying it right now because I'm teaching it to you. Analyzing, I'm going through each individual thing, thinking about it. Evaluating, you know, I'm thinking more in depth about it, my understanding is increasing, and then creating, I actually am creating a presentation based off this, you know? So not to like say my understanding of Bloom's taxonomy is the sum total of all knowledge, you know, on this particular topic, but in a basic sense, you can sort of see that the very creation of this presentation is a reflection of what this says. So. This is useful for when you're taking notes, all this kind of stuff. Um, oh, Ali, I saw you light up. Did yeah, you I was just gonna chime in really quick, but I want you to finish your thoughts, so go ahead. Oh, okay, I was just gonna say that like, this is pretty useful for um, self-evaluation, 
you know, when you think about how you think, think about how you study, use this, you know, work your way up through the levels and become a better learner through self-evaluation. Um, I was just going to chime in with two thoughts. Um, first of all, this pyramid, um, so commonly, it's reviewed for um, teachers and educators as they're trying to help students learn material. And it's interesting because y'all, in a lot of ways, being in college, are your own teachers as well. You have an instructor who's there to guide you and provide content, but a lot of the learning is very independent. And so it's really important that you're aware of these different concepts and that you have a similar understanding as Chris has in being able to explain it to others. Um, one question I have for the group, and feel free to use the chat or just to um, un unmic yourself, um, is which levels do you think are more common at the high school level, so those who aren't yet in college, and then at what levels do you typically see in college, and maybe even what levels do you think you see for like graduate or PhD students? Um, curious if y'all have any thoughts on that. And I wouldn't worry about wrong answers. We're just kind of guessing right now. So go ahead. I feel like um, for high school, I feel like that goes with remembering and understanding because I feel like in high school, you just need to remember things, understand them. Well, as if you go to college, you're applying what you've learned into higher courses, into coursework. And then when you get to a PhD, that's when you evaluate everything you've applied and you create something out of that. That was a really good kind of just run through of it. Um, I would basically agree with that. I would say, yeah, in high school, really the remembering and understanding, if you probably remember back to like vocabulary tests and things like that, where you really just have to know a definition and regurgitate information, um, or you got a study guide and it was like, all right, let me just memorize a study guide and I'll probably do fine. Um, but in college is where you're probably finding yourself challenged a little bit more, having to apply information beyond what was taught in class in the lecture, having to actually analyze things um, in different structures or patterns that are, are new. Um, and then the final two, you might get some evaluating in college. Um, you might have some papers where you have to make your own hypothesis or judgment based on information you're presented with. Um, but creating, you were spot on, Austin, um, creating is a lot of times that dissertation or that capstone or whatever that might look like. Um, so you may have the opportunity to do some creating um, you know, as an undergraduate, but um, that's definitely something to look forward to if you're interested in graduate or PhD work. And um, one final thing I'll add in before handing it back to Chris is that this pyramid is a huge key that instructors use when developing their um, quizzes and exams and stuff. Um, they may not use it exactly this way, but here's what I challenge you to do. If you have an old test, um, go through the questions and figure out how you would classify each of the questions on that test. And make sure that when you're studying, you are studying for that specific level of material. If you're taking exams where you are needing to analyze information consistently, you're not studying where you need to practice analyzing it, you're not matching up your studying to what you and if you search online Bloom's taxonomy words, it'll actually give you words to look for in questions that will show up on tests, where you can legitimately like classify each question and figure out, okay, what level am I at in this class? Um, so just throwing that out there. Um, hopefully it's a little helpful with your study as well. Thank you. Those were great contributions from both of you. I think this is definitely a very helpful thing for uh, anybody studying for anything to have access to. Okay, oh, one more thing. So let me just read this. This pyramid depicts the different levels of thinking. Each. Right, okay, so that's pretty much what we just said. I forgot that little last part was there. Um, okay, so moving on to metacognition and studying. So one example, a student might ask, am I really retaining this information? Or am I studying just because I want to do good on the exam, or do I actually want to learn the material, or is the way I'm studying working best for me? So these are important things to really think about because so many times as a student myself, I think, oh gosh, you know, okay, I've got to study for this for like at least a good hour tonight, otherwise I'm not going to do good. You know, really breaking down what I just said, otherwise I'm not going to do good, you know, Am I, am I studying for the exam or am I studying because I want to learn? Shouldn't it be, I got to study for at least an hour, otherwise 
I'm not going to learn what I need to learn for this class. You know, just thinking about these things is very important. So uh, moving on. So a reflection question. Why are you in college? And why do you do the things you do every day for school? So just to answer that myself as uh, to start, and if anybody else wants to answer, you know, please feel free. Um, we welcome all of your opinions. For me personally, I want to be a therapist. That is my career goal. But why do I do the things I do every day for school? Like my day to day pretty much looks like me getting out of bed, going to work, and after work, studying, doing homework, you know, I would say we can all relate to that on a certain level. But why do I do these day to day things? Why do I do homework every day? Why do I study every day? You know, why don't I just cram it all in one day before the exam or one day a week? And it's really because as I have grown throughout my academic career in college, I do want to learn the material. And not because professors have, you know, pounded that into my head, like learn to learn not to do good on the test, but because I actually have come to recognize the value of knowledge. And so thinking about how I learn, why I learn is very important. So in terms of you guys' day-to-day -day stuff, does anybody have any answers they would like to share about why you're in college, what your goals are, why you do the things you do? If not, that is totally fine. The purpose of the question is to reflect on it. And like that answer that I just came up with, like I did not just, you know, come up with that. That required a lot of thought. So really reflect on things. Um, I noticed, okay, uh, Kayla just put something in the chat. Um, she says she wants to be the best person she can be, learn as much as she can, and ultimately make her family proud. Those are great reasons, you know, and really thinking about the reasons will guide your academic career. You know, when you think about why you're doing something, instead of just thinking, I have to do this, it'll contextualize things for you. So that's, that's my two cents with that. Um, so as we move on, where is my mouse? Here we go. A metacognition in the work life. So a student might ask, I'm working to make money for school, but am I really happy with my job or life? You know, is my work taking up too much energy or too much of my energy or time? You know, thinking about these things is important because a lot of the times students just feel overwhelmed. They don't think about why they're overwhelmed. You know, being overwhelmed is more a feeling than a thought. So when I feel overwhelmed with school or work or whatever, I so often don't think about it. I'm just thinking, oh gosh, I'm so overwhelmed. But why? You know, why am I overwhelmed? I think about my jobs. Um, I was in the service industry for four years and toward the end of it, um, I left, I worked in a fast food restaurant that I left on my sophomore year of college because I really started thinking like this, you know, I'm making money for school, sure, but am I doing what I want? Am I happy? You know, and as a college student, getting good grades is so much easier if you can be happy in all the areas of your life, not just having good study habits, but also being able to like what you do, which is obviously a little more difficult because we are college students. We don't have degrees yet, you know, most of us. And um, so our job prospects are somewhat limited, especially you know, because we have to devote time to classes, but really thinking about this stuff is important. Um, so here's a reflection question. What is the real reason you're working at your job? For example, it's more than just making money because everybody who's working at a job makes money. So really like push past it, ask why, and then think about what that says about you. So that's sort of like a very loosely constructed question. So I will give my own answer to sort of guide your reflection. Um, I am a peer advisor right now, so I will use that as my example. 
So obviously, yes, part of it is about making money because as a college student, I need money. So that's part of it. But more than that, you know, why did I leave my service industry job at the restaurant for this position? It's because I like helping people for sure. You know, I want to be a therapist, as I mentioned before. And then, like I said, ask why again. So just saying, oh, I like helping people. Okay, that can apply to so many different people. You know, why do I like helping people? My answer to that is that so many times during my academic life, uh, high school and college, I found myself um, in need of help from either advisors or friends, like socially, you know, people don't really think about needing help either. It's just a feeling, you know, you think, I wish I had someone to talk to, or you feel that, but you don't think, who can I talk to? Or I have these people to talk to. So being in this position is very fulfilling to me. So it's more than just money. And if you can't think about that, or if you have an answer that does not go beyond the simple need for money, then really reflect on that. That would be my advice to you. Really reflect on, are you furthering your career goals? So this position right now for me is furthering my career goals because it's more closely related to what I want to do with my degree than say my old job at the restaurant. So really, really get in there right off the bat. Does anybody have any like examples of this, anything they want to contribute. I know this one requires like probably a little more thought than the last one, but I would love to hear from you guys. If I could chime in really quick and then I would love yes. to hear from a few others as well. Um, can you go back one slide? Yeah. Um, it was interesting when you were talking about the previous slide, there was a question in there that was like applicable to work, but my brain also went to studying. Um, it's that second one. Um, is my work taking up too much of my energy or time? I think that there's a judgment value that goes into that question, right? Like too much is different for each of us, right. but there's also work that's involved in your studying. And that's a huge factor, in my opinion, with how well you study or how detrimental your studying can be, is if you think it's taking up too much of your time, very likely you're overwhelmed, as Chris was saying, and you're not going to do the more intricate studying that needs to happen for you to really truly learn it. So those are some questions to be asking yourself is like, okay, is there, are there more efficient ways that I can be studying, but still learning at the level that I need to? And if you're not quite sure exactly what that looks like is going to that next level of studying so that you retain information, but also being efficient about it, make an appointment with one of our peer advisors and we'll customize maybe a study plan for you and figure out maybe what you can be doing that maybe you haven't tried yet. Um, I'll give you a quick example. Most students, when they start out college, their go-to for studying is taking notes, rewriting what it is, is on the slides from the professor, that type of a thing. And let me tell you, that takes a while, especially if your instructor likes to fill their slides with lots of information. Um, and yet, at the same time, when you're doing that, we think about what you're being tested on. Tests typically are questions that you have to answer. Rewriting notes isn't answering questions. And so maybe what you need to be spending your time doing is creating questions based on those notes but then you can answer during your next study session to see if you remember it. Um, so that's, again, thinking about that Bloom's taxonomy, that's um, applying the information, potentially you have to analyze it. There's some different higher levels of learning that have to take place. Whereas if you're just rewriting things, that's probably remembering and understanding. Um, that second question that you put there, I think that's a really good one, Chris. Yeah, as I was writing these, I was thinking about my own experiences and um, that definitely applies to studying too. You know, some classes don't take that much time to study for me because I've taken a bunch of site courses so the information sort of related but if I'm exploring a new class as many freshmen are, I find that studying is harder for new things. So it's all about reflection. So this is definitely something to think about. Um, so that being said, did anybody have anything they wanted to contribute on either of these, any of these questions? Once again, don't, don't feel like, you know, bad if you don't want to say anything. It is totally fine. These things require thought. So uh, really think about them. Okay, social life. So this is equally important, in my opinion, 
in the life of a college student because and you can you know take that from me a psych major who spent his entire college life thinking about these things so you know i from a mental health perspective think that social life is very important and when i say social life i don't mean your extroverted social life you know because you can be an introvert and you know um Oh, I'm getting like notifications on my computer here. Okay, there we go. Um, you can be an introvert, you can be any kind of person, but we are a connected people, you know, and even though it's virtual, even though things are virtual right now, we are still in some way connected. So maintaining healthy connections is important to me, which is why I wanted to include this in here. So a student might ask, am I splitting my time responsibly between my commitment as a student and my commitment to my friends. And I use commitment pretty seriously in that sense. Like you did choose to go to college. You chose to be friends with the people you want to be friends with. These are things that you have the conscious ability to change. So the fact that you are not changing them, you're still a college student, you're still friends with people, means that you are in a way committed to them. So are these commitments in conflict? You know really think like this might be more of a high school level question because I know like peer pressure is a much uh, more salient kind of topic in high school than in college, but are the people you're surrounding yourself with helping you? Is my social circle acting as a positive influence to me and vice versa? So thinking reflectively, I would ask how does your social life positively impact your identity as a student and as a person in general. For me, just to answer my own question, I think my social life positively in fact in, impacts me as a student in that I study with people. So I have friends who are in widely different majors and areas of career exploration, but we still study together and it does help me not only retain the information, but do better on grades, you know, collaborate with people, get that social socialization despite being virtual. And um, looking at Allie's chat, study groups and group chats are great for motivational support. You know, we are virtual, but we can still be connected. And as a person in general, right? social circle benefits me in you know more ways than i could possibly imagine just being able to talk with somebody when i'm stressed or having the confidence in myself that other people want to talk to me when they're stressed or when they're not stressed you know just thinking about these things is important and i think once again you know i could say it a million times but even though we're virtual we're still connected and it's important to pay attention to your mental health and how that is in impacted by your connection. So does anybody have anything they would like to contribute about social life or anything like that? If not, I will, oh, were you about to say something, Ellie? Yeah, I was just going to ask um, maybe a more specific question, but I know this varies quite a bit, and this is kind of the whole metacognition thing is just reflecting. Um, who here studies, like does a good job studying in a group setting? Um, or are there any of us who are like, nope, I really avoid groups because I don't feel like it's productive for me? Or does it depend? That's a good question. I would love to hear from at least one person if somebody is brave and wants to, to speak or type in the chat. Oh, I see a few messages here. The, um, so there's that variation. Some are saying working well in group studying. Some are saying studying alone. Somebody says depends. I think that depends is super important because maybe for math, you're like, yep, I need to do that solo. But then you go and work on a history project and you're like, I need to process this out loud and talk to people about it or else I won't remember it at all. So ask yourself those questions when you're learning and studying, because that's the key to what you need to do for your study plan, is pay attention to that. Bouncing ideas around, that's huge, yeah. Um, there's another um, graphic that um, the PALs have access to that 
basically shows the different modalities of studying and being able to um, interact with another person is actually a higher level of studying than if you were just reading something. Um, and I think that's really important to think about. Thank you all for your contributions. This was great. I think uh, for me personally, I would say it depends, you know, with um, just to give a quick example, one of the courses that I'm taking right now is Applied Social Psychology. So the very name of that course sort of tells you which one of these options might work better for me. Like I study with other people when it comes to that course because it's Applied Social Psychology. So really just for me, I mean, I'm sure it's a personal thing, but actually applying the material in a social psychology class really help me, helps me remember it. But in other classes, I do prefer to study alone, not only because it helps me more, but you know, some courses I don't have in common with anybody. Like I said, my friends come from a whole bunch of different majors. So I do think it depends, but it is very important to at least keep an open mind with things. And I love the idea of bouncing ideas off each other because that is very good also. Um, okay, individual metacognition. A student might ask, am I really happy with the path that I am on in life? Now I know that's pretty deep, but really think about it. Are the actions and thoughts that I am taking or having reflective of the person that I wanna be? So my answer to that, or my answer to those um, would be, I am happy with the path that I'm on in life. And that took, I would say like years to really think about, you know, as a freshman in college, you know, I thought to myself, okay, I'm happy that I'm in college, but why am I in college? That's, that was something I didn't think about. You know, I was in college for other people it was like everybody wanted me to go to college. I had great grades in high school. It was really not for myself, but as I evolved and grew in my college life, I realized it's it's good that I'm here because this is what I want to do. These are the steps that I'm taking to get what I want out of life. And the metacognitive thoughts really came to me gradually over time. Um, so our reflection question, what was the last thing you did to treat yourself when you were feeling down and how did you feel afterwards? Let me explain why I put this question in here before I answer for myself. This might not seem like an academic uh, kind of question, but treating yourself as it relates to mental health is so important. My example is um, I've been trying to eat healthier recently and that's sort of like my new year's resolution and as we're now a month and a half in, I'm at the point where I'm like really trying to, you know, maintain it. And, um, but the thing is, I don't cut out all junk food. You know, I allow myself things. So I, uh, like last weekend, I did a lot of studying one night. I felt really good about it. Oh my gosh, that Rachel in the chat just literally like took my example, ice cream. I treated myself to ice cream uh, Saturday night, I was studying so hard. I did really good work. And I thought, you know what? I've eaten healthy all day today. I feel great about myself. I'm going to have a bowl of ice cream and it's okay. You know, it's not the end of the world. Like, um, it's very important to think about how you reward yourself because so many of us just punish ourselves, you know, oh, I did bad on this test. Okay. You know, be, be kind to yourself though. If you do something, if you perform in a way you didn't want to, ask yourself why, figure it out, you know, and you don't have to do that alone, not to give us like a plug, but you know, talk with a peer advisor, like, or your academic advisor or whoever, and allow yourself an open mind. Um, one, another chat that I just saw pop up, uh, burning candles and decluttering. Yes. Oh my gosh. The feeling of feeling lighter. Oh my God. I totally agree. Like I, my room is like kind of messy admittedly, which is why none of you are looking at the floor right now. <laughs> but um, when I clean it, you know, which I try to do pretty, like pretty occasionally, that's a good phrase we'll say, 
pretty occasionally. I try and clean it. And whenever I do, it really does make me feel better. You know, just seeing declutter a decluttered space, like, it's so, I feel lighter. So great answers, great answers, loved it. Um, but yeah, really, really think about it. Think about positive aspects of your life and how things are going from there. And that's a way to think individually, metacognitively. Can I add something again? I always have yes. thoughts, but um, <laughs> um, so the, the question about treating yourself, um, you were giving the example, like incorporating it into your studying and um, the metacognition piece there, I think too, is also about like what the treating yourself is and how often as it relates to your studying. So like I know some students for some subjects, it is like pulling teeth to get through some of their assignments or some of the things they have to do to study. So that student might need to have several treat yourself moments throughout a week just to get through what they need for that class. And that's okay. But the next student sitting next to them might be like, oh no, I finished that in an hour. It was super easy. I loved it. And they might not need to treat themselves much at all for that exact same assignment. So that's where it becomes so personal. Is think about your thinking. If your thinking is getting really bogged down with what you have to do for this class, you need to figure out what you're doing to treat yourself so that you do feel like you've earned it and you're doing a good job and you have that motivation. Um, yeah, just kind of adding to the question there. Thank you. Um, I, I totally agree. I mean, your thinking, that's the whole reason to think metacognitively. Learn more about yourself, you know, really get in there. Um, okay, why think metacognitively? These are just some uh, corresponding areas where you can improve your life thinking this way. Academic improvement. So just thinking hypothetically, if you think metacognitively, improve your study skills, treat yourself, develop a positive mindset, really learn more about yourself as it relates specifically to how you study, it only follows logically that you would see academic improvement. You know, it, that's growth right there. So metacognition truly, and I speak from personal experience, it does improve your academic um, grades, we'll say, your academic I don't know why I can't think of a word to like follow that, but like your improvement, you will improve academically. Um, career outlooks. So I, I put that in there. That's a pretty futuristic thing for a lot of people, you know, especially freshmen who are just starting out. I myself am a senior graduating this semester. So my career outlook is much closer than say a freshman who's just starting. But when you think metacognitively, really learn about yourself. It stands to reason that at some point during your journey, you will really uh, understand why you wanna do what you wanna do or understand why you don't wanna do something you did think you wanted to do. You know, certain jobs require certain ways of thinking. And if in your metacognitive journey, you realize this is not the kind of person or thinker that I am. Maybe this career isn't right for me. I'll explore something else. You know, it really is good to know about yourself um, for a lot of different things. Interpersonal success. When I say that, I don't mean like, you know, your ability to make friends will increase or whatever, or you'll be an extrovert if you are an introvert, you know, nothing like, you know, I don't want to encourage, you know, insecurities in anybody, but like, uh, your interpersonal relationships that you have now, personally, mine have grown as I think more about myself. There are people that I realized, you know, early on in college that, okay, maybe I only associated myself with these people because I saw them every day in high school. You know, am I the kind of person who wants to be around somebody who influences me in this way when I no longer have to be, you know? really understanding yourself will lead to a better understanding of who you want around you. And that will really allow you to live a much happier life. Take it from me. I feel great now in life, four years through college. I don't feel burned out. I feel like my friends have always been there for me. There have been changes in my social circle, for sure. 
but that just comes naturally. And I think, you know, that I am living happily in the moment. And that is because I actively think in this way. So it's not something that you just, you know, master. And then one day your every thought is metacognitive. You know, I actively put energy into thinking like this every day. And now it's sort of become natural. So I ask myself, okay, how do I feel about doing this just today? Not to like ramble, but <laughs> I put together a list of assignments that I wanted to get done today before I did this presentation. Because pretty much for me, I'm, I feel old, but like after 5 p.m., my energy just gradually goes throughout the night. And by like nine, I'm done working. You know, I don't want to do anything. And so I asked myself, okay, I know my energy is going after this presentation. I'm not going to want to do stuff. So let's pick the most important stuff or, you know, and that's obviously very subjective. I did that and now I feel good. So connecting that back to interpersonal success, give yourself time, give yourself time for things. And taking um, a comment from the chat about this being a barrier that we face being in an online format, that's totally true. You know, figure out ways to connect yourself. Like we have technology, we can be together, you know, until things get back to normal. And really, this is a really important thing that I like can't stress enough. Um, now the last little bullet here, sort of philosophical, but very important, self-understanding and the pursuit of happiness. You know, I know I've talked a lot about that, but just be happy, you know, allow yourself to be happy, try to be happy. Don't wait for happiness to come because you do good on a test that you studied only for that test. You know, ask yourself, am I happy because I did good on the test or am I happy because I learned the information? Am I happy because I'm working a job that I want to work at or am I happy that I'm just making money? You know, where is that happiness coming from? Is it coming from you or is it coming from someone else? Where should it be coming from? These are all things that I encourage you to think about. Um, so those are just four reasons why you should think this way. Um, all of these are important for college students. So I know different people might have different views. For example, I, I'm more introverted than I am extroverted, but I still consider myself like sort of a mix. So um, individual metacognition applies more to me than say interpersonal metacognition. So whichever one of these or all four of them could apply to you, like, you know, really put effort into thinking about them because they are all so important. Okay, these are resources. I am going to open up these pages just to show you what they look like. But if there's any, any one of these that um, anybody wants to go more in depth in our, looks like we have like 10 minutes left or so. I mean, we can go over, it doesn't matter. But um, if anybody wants to go more in depth with these, feel free uh, to either let me know, message in the chat, whatever. Oops. And we will, we will do that. So tell me if you can still see this. Can everybody see this new screen that I am on? Okay, all right, I see people nodding. So this is for um, Vanderbilt University. So thinking about one's thinking, this is a page. It's pretty um, dense, but there is a lot of good information here. So I encourage that you give this a good read. Um, this is more from the perspective of a teacher, like how to assess students. But when you read it from your perspective, it, I mean, you can benefit from reading it. Um, so that was Vanderbilt University. DePaul University also has uh, good resources. These are activities. This is a much shorter page, but they are fun things to do. So once again, this is kind of a, from the perspective of a teacher, but if you do them, say, I've considered doing it in work meetings. In my most recent work meeting, I did look through these things and um, determine if I wanted to do them. A lot of these things 
are sort of in person. So I couldn't really do them, but thinking about how they would have benefited me allowed me to think metacognitively. So these are really fun. I suggest you look at them. Um, and these are just tips here, you know, give it a look. I really think it'll benefit people. Um, Inner Drive. Okay, so this is a website that I found titled Eight Ways to Develop Metacognitive Skills. They have a fun little video here on metacognition. Um, and so just looking at these, um, set yourself goals, ask good questions, prepare, monitor your performance, seek out feedback, keep a diary, like, and then read more about these. Great tips, great tips. I let's see. I mean, I encourage you all to look at all of these, but just to show you what's in each, so that you can prioritize them. Um, okay. This is from a website called Learning Scientist. This page is also about developing your own metacognitive skills. So they have individual points. Make sure to comprehend the text, and then they have an explanation. Same with other stuff. Retrieve text details from memory. Get feedback. Okay, so we see now two places have suggested that. Maybe that's something to look into. Um, and also something that I'll just add. Look at the references of these pages. You know, these are all resources too that I'm sure you could find somewhere. And so if these pages aren't enough, if you want to read more, I mean, we're looking at six resources right here that you can probably find. Um, so this last one, this one I think is actually an article. Yeah, it is. Um, so this, the full article is here. So this is, this is pretty dense. I mean, it's a lot of reading for sure. But if you are a psych major like me and would actually enjoy reading about this, you know, give it a read. I would say this is probably more academic in nature than um, simple tips and tricks, but beneficial nonetheless. That being said, I think that was all of them. Is there any one of these in particular that anybody wants to go through a little more in depth or anything like that? Either way, I, re I encourage you all to give them a look. Um, and then just to so to end off, I think this is our last slide here. Um, if you want to talk more about this stuff, you know, give us a call. Like, not we don't have a phone, so I guess you can't give us a call, but you can shoot us an email. And this is our website here. Um, I'll go to the website just to give us a little plug. This is our web page. We have a bunch of cool information. This is us. Um, our schedule is here. That's actually going to be updated pretty soon. Um, here are other crash courses that we're doing, just to like give these a plug. We're doing a um, collaboration with Career Services next week, week after, self-esteem. So feel free to come to those. A bunch of resources here. And uh, yeah, so please contact us. We would love to hear from you. Our email is right here. It's also on the website. Um, and yeah, we would love to hear from you. I think, yeah, that that is it for the presentation. Um, just to mention our ticket out the door activity. Uh, I think, yes, okay, so the chat was sent to everybody. We have a ticket out the door activity that we're doing. And if on your way out, you could fill it out, that would be great. It's just for us to sort of get your feedback, collect data, you know, stuff like that. But before we end. Does anybody have any final questions, comments, like anything you want to include? Yes. I always do. Um, so there's two things. Um, one of them I'm going to add to your resources page just as like a here and now something you can do this week if you want to learn more about metacognition. Yeah. Uh, I was super excited when I saw the a weekly student email from Dean Finley. Um, on Friday, there's a virtual opportunity 
hear from one of the leading experts on um, college student metacognition. Um, her name is Dr. Sandra McGuire, and you're able to register for free if you would like to hear her speak on Friday morning. Um, and what I can do if there is some interest from our group is I can, um, when you complete the ticket out the door activity, you give us your unique name, which then allows us to send you an email. And I can make sure that I just send that link real quick and make sure you have access. It does require you register in advance. But let me tell you this, I've heard Dr. McGuire speak at least two times and she, one, is super informative, but two, is um, really inspiring to get you to really start thinking metacognitively in everything that you do. Um, so that was one thing I wanted to mention. The other is that um, Chris and the other pals, they are great at personalizing their conversations with you about your individual goals. I mean, that's metacognition at its core. And so if you have a goal that you're working toward or you're maybe not making as great progress as you want to be, Set up an appointment with PALS. They have a contact form on their website as well that you probably saw when you, Chris was scrolling through. Um, and you can really easily just set something up for the end of this week, next week, whatever works for your schedule and explore that goal, figure out, okay, um, what's a barrier to it and where do I go from here? And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, complete the ticket out the door. I hope you all found this beneficial. Um, Thank you all for coming. This, uh, just so you know, it, in terms of attendance is like more than I have had recently. So I really do appreciate that. Um, any last final thoughts before I stop recording and anything anybody wants to say? I can probably stop sharing. Well, I'll leave this up here for a second. Um, if that is all, I hope you all have a great day, great week, great weekend, great college life, and I encourage you to check out our future presentations. Like Ali said, schedule an appointment with us. We are always here. Um, and then complete the ticket out the door, and if that's it, then thank you all for coming. Uh, on behalf of me and the other peer advisors, we really appreciate it. So. Everybody is free. Thank you.